begin with this infinite sum for e. The first two terms together add to 2, so e must be greater than 2. But what can we say about the remaining sum? Here's that sum again with the factorials broken down. Compare it to the sum of a geometric series with a common ratio of one half. It must be less than this geometric series because each term after the first term is less than the corresponding term in the geometric series. Recall the formula for the sum of a geometric series. S being the sum, A naught is the first term and R is the common ratio. Plug in those elements for this geometric series and we see that their sum is 1. So the series from E must be less than 1. Given that E is 2 plus a number less than 1, E is between 2 and 3, i.e. it's not itself an integer. Now if E is rational, then we can express it as a ratio in lowest terms between two integers, P and Q. If we follow the series far enough, eventually we'll find a term with Q factorial in the denominator. Let's multiply the whole works then by Q factorial. Simplify, and we are left with this sum. Since P and Q are integers, each of these terms is itself an integer. Q factorial is the product of all the integers from 1 to Q, so each lesser factorial must divide Q factorial. Each of these terms is not an integer. The denominators are all greater than 1. But is the sum of these non-integers an integer? Let's focus on this part of the sum. We know that it's less than the sum of the geometric series with a common ratio of 1 over Q. As before, we can work out the sum of that series and we end up with 1 over Q minus 1, which is less than 1. So where does that leave us? These two expressions are each integers. Because that final part of the sum is less than 1 but positive, it must be a non-integer. We are left with an integer, which is the sum of an integer and a non-integer. But this is impossible. Thus, our premise that E is a ratio of two integers must be false, and E is irrational. Bob's your uncle.